What's up guys, it's Dandelion and in today's video I'll be showing you guys how to get the glory of the Okramar Radar achievement. Now before I'm going to talk about these achievements, um, just keep in mind that you have to come back three times here, so no you will not be able to get your mount in the first run. There's also another thing which is even more annoying and that's the fact that you will be needing around five people for two achievements and then there's this other achievement which requires two people. I wish Blizzard would just take that out of the game because basically this whole achievement is so old now that I don't get why they want us to come back here with five people <laughs> instead of just soloing it. But I guess it is what it is. With that being said, let's start with the achievements. Okay, so the first achievement that we are going to do is called No More Tears. Now this achievement is very simple to do, but before you are going to try this achievement out, you gotta make sure that you have a character that's able to root for a long time or slow. Either one of those is fine, but if you're going to try this on a druid, it will go a lot faster because they have mass entanglement, so just keep that in mind. Now another thing is that you want to put this difficulty on heroic, because if you're going to attempt this on mythic like I did, it will probably bug out, so place it on heroic and you will be fine. Now, the thing that you have to do here is basically get the boss down to 0 HP and whenever you do that, he will start spawning these blobs and what you want to do is you want to start rooting, slowing or stunning these blobs that are hostile until the boss is going to start reforming again. Now, whenever the boss is going to reform, these blobs will start transforming into a tear of the Vill. Now, what you have to do for this achievement is kill 10 tears of the Vill and basically after that you can just kill the boss. So that's all there is to this achievement. Now whenever you have killed 10 of these tears, you can just kill the boss and you will have your achievement. Okay, so for the next achievement, make sure you are tracking the achievement because whenever you have completed what you have to do, this achievement will turn white. Make sure you have DBM because that will make things go a lot easier. And well, you'll be needing 5 people for this, which sucks, but that's just the way it is. The thing that you have to do basically here is get his soft food down to his mark of anguish face. So don't nuke him. Whenever that happens, he will start spawning this panda. And this panda will start chasing someone. The person that's getting chased will get this action button. Now what you want to do is spread 40 yards away from each other. And you can do that easily by typing slash range 40. That way you will know if you are standing far enough from each other. Now all you want to do then is just wait until the panda reaches you and whenever he does you just want to pass your buff to the other person. You just want to do that until he has run like 200 yards or something and then your achievement will turn white. And whenever it turns white you can just burst down the boss and kill him. Next up is non shall pass. Now all you have to do here is just burst down the boss and that's it. So the next achievement is called swallow your pride. Now this achievement is basically the same as the previous one. All you have to do is just kill the boss. Okay, so the next achievement that we are going to do is called the Immortal Vanguard. Now, this achievement is very simple to do. All you have to do is make sure that your NPCs don't die. So, basically the way this works is that whenever you are starting this fight, there will be these gnomes or goblins, depending on your faction, that are going to try to open up the door towards the tower. Now, what you want to do is basically just kill everything and make sure none of your friendly NPCs die. Whenever the door that leads into the tower gets opened by these goblins or gnomes, you just have to make your way upstairs and kill everything along the way. Now whenever you are on top of that tower, all you have to do is just sit in the cannon, shoot at Gallagrass a couple of times, and then you can jump off the tower, kill the boss, and you will have your achievement. Next up we have the achievement called Fire in the Hole. Now the first thing that you want to do for this achievement is track it, because that way you can see whenever it turns white, and whenever it turns white you can kill the boss. <laughs> so what you want to do here is you want to start damaging the boss, but just not too much, don't kill him or anything like that. Meanwhile you just want to wait until he enters his siege mode. Basically whenever he enters his siege mode, he will start spawning these crawler mines and he will start using his laser. Now. What you want to do is walk over these mines as the laser is targeting you because whenever the laser is going to hit these crawler mines they will get buffed and they will change into a superheated crawler mine. Now whenever that happens you want to click on it and that's basically it. You want to keep doing that until you have jumped on 6 superheated crawler mines. You will see your achievement turn white and you can just kill the boss. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this next achievement as simple as I can. Basically for rescue raiders, all you have to do is kill all the hostile orcs. There's one orc in the bank which drops a key. Now you want to loot this key and you want to unlock one of these cages with these prisoners in it. It's very important that you unlock a cage with prisoners in it, otherwise you won't get this achievement. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is that you should not kill these neutrals. So only kill the hostiles, just keep the neutrals alive because they are basically just the slaves of the orcs. Whenever you have done that, you can go into the boss room and kill the boss and you will see your achievement. 
Next up, we are going to do Gammon Will Save Us. Now, this achievement is very easy. All you gotta do is just kill everything, free Gammon, kill everything along the way to Nesgrim, and what you want to do then is just nuke Nesgrim and you are done. Okay, so now we are going to do Unlimited Potential. Now, what you want to do for this achievement is whenever you are making your way up towards the boss, you will encounter this corrupted skull splitter. Now, don't kill him. You want to take him all the way up towards the boss room, and there you want to aggro the boss. Now, whenever you have aggroed the boss, you want to start moving him away from the middle. Because, for some weird reason, this achievement might bug out if you keep the boss in the same place. So just move him a little bit, and you should be fine. Now, what you have to do, basically, is just sit and wait until Malkarok is going to cast his Breath of Yashirash. Now, whenever he is casting his Breath of Yashirash, you want to make sure that your Ed is standing right in front of it. Now, after a while, your Ed will start transforming into this corrupted thing. Whenever he is transformed into this corrupted Sha thing, you just want to kill the boss and you'll have your achievement. Okay, so for the next achievement called Crisscross, you will need at least one extra person. The thing that you have to do here is basically one of you is going to focus the Mantids and one of you is going to focus the Mogu. Now, you are not allowed to open any of these green chests because if you open a green chest, these pandas will spawn out of it and you cannot kill any of those. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is that if you are the one that's focusing the mantids, so these orange boxes, you can only open up these orange boxes. If you are focusing the mogu, you can only open up these blue boxes. If you open up a different box, so let's say for example you are focusing the mogu but you open up a orange box or a green box and you kill that enemy that's inside of there, you will fill your achievement. That's basically all you need to know. Besides that, it's just the same thing as you do normal. You open up the boxes and kill everything that's inside of it. Eventually, your bar will fill up and you are able to click on this lever. Now, whenever you have clicked on this lever, you can click on the chain and you can move over to another room. Make sure that that room is filled with the same color of chests that you have been opening in the first room. Whenever you have done the same thing in that other room, you will have your achievement. Now we are going to do another achievement which requires you to have five people. Now what you want to do is you want to have your raid difficulty on 10 men normal. The reason for that is because half of your raid should be under 50% HP to push him into the second phase. So what you want to do is stack on each other and have no gear on at all. Just be naked and just wait until your whole party is under 50% HP. Now whenever that happens he will transition into this phase where he's going to fixate someone. Just guide him and don't die because of it. <laughs> in this phase there will be these jailers that are going to spawn basically what you want to do is kill them and they will drop a key now you don't have to click on the key you will just get this buff now with this buff you can start clicking on the cage where the snail is imprisoned and you have to click on that cage three times so you have to kill three jailers whenever you have done that and you have unlocked the cage you can start killing the boss whenever the boss is dead all you have to do is make sure that the snail is going to walk over the corpse of this boss and you will have your achievement. Now, the next achievement is called lasers and magnets and drills, oh my. Now, what you have to do is basically just nuke the boss and you will have your achievement. <laughs> so guys, now we only need to do two more achievements and basically for this achievement, now we are the paragon, you need to come back here three times. Now, the way this works is that every time you are going to do this encounter, and kill one of these bosses, you are able to click on their body and whenever you do that, you will get a buff from them. Every time that you come here, you want to get a buff from a different boss. That's all there is to it. Do that three times and you'll have your achievement. All right, guys, so now we are finally going to do the last achievement, which is called Strike. Now, before you are going to do this, make sure you track your achievement because whenever it turns white, you can start killing Garrosh. What you want to do is stand near one of these iron stars and keep killing the engineer that spawns near it. Garrosh will start spawning these ads. Most of the time he will start spawning 6 ads plus a Farseer. Now what you want to do is just kill the Farseer and keep killing the Engineer over and over until you have this huge amount of ads around you. Make sure there are more than 18 ads around you because that will just make you able to get this achievement way faster. The thing that you have to do whenever you have a mass amount of ads around you is just keep walking into this Iron Star and stop killing the Engineer because otherwise these Iron Stars won't go off. So yeah, that's basically what you have to do. And eventually, whenever all these ads have died and your achievement has turned white, you can just start killing Garrosh and you will have your achievement. Well, guys, that's how you get your Glory of the Orgrimmar Raider achievement. I know that a couple of these achievements were a pain in the ass, mostly because you needed five people for them, but you will get an amazing mount. <laughs> so, in my opinion, it's worth it. I hope that I explained these achievements in an easy way for you to follow. If you liked this video and if it helped you, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to leave a like on the video. If you have any questions, 
just leave it in the comment section below or message me on Twitter. Now also don't forget to follow me on Twitch because that's basically where I'm streaming in the weekends. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.